Hello everyone, I'm Dan, and welcome back to my kitchen for another 3D printer unboxing and review video. Today, we are joined by the Creality K2 Combo. Lovely. I would like to say that the K2 Combo is only 53 pounds, whereas the K2 Plus is 112. So, maybe only half a hernia this time. Let's open her up. Quick installation guide. The CFS. The strain. Even has a little diagram on how not to mess up. Stick the cable through here. And then you take your CFS, place her there. And just like that, she's ready to print. This was actually the fastest printer setup I have done. It was four bolts. Technically, it was only two bolts because you, you take the four and minus two, but you added two. So you, it's, you took away four screws and then you added two screws. So then it's negative, negative two screws for this printer. The K2 combo also came with four rolls of filament, an extruder kit, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, and a quick swap nozzle. Let's go ahead and move her over to the print room and get her set up next to her big brother. Once the printer was set up, I turned it on for the first time, but my screen wouldn't work. So I simply turned it off and on and it was working just fine. The next step was the startup calibration, which took about 15 minutes. It had a new firmware update, which I downloaded and then ran it through an additional calibration procedure. I then started loading the filament into the CFS. Creality's brand of filament uses RFID tags to automatically link the specs of the filament to the machine and only requires you to place and load the filament. However, if you're using any other filament, you have to manually select the brand color and material. In order to print on this machine, you need the Creality Slicer. If you don't have it, you can download it from the Creality website and install it yourself. After opening the Creality Slicer, I added the K2 to my Creality Cloud. I decided my first test print would be the Colossus helmet my buddy Dice Props over on Wireframe made. I threw the mask into the slicer, oriented it to the bottom face, set the infill to 10, wall loops to 3, I enabled tree supports, sliced it, and then started the print. For only taking six hours, the print came out beautifully and the support snapped off extremely smooth. The next print was the hair. It was a little weird to orient for minimal support, so I printed it upside down on the very top of the front. I left the settings the same, sliced it, and then sent it to the printer. It printed amazing and the supports popped off super easily. I had minimal support scarring and the hair and face lined up perfectly and the print quality was really good. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Enough helmets and masks. We want trinkets. All right, I got you. I loaded up this little articulated octopus and changed the filaments to blue, teal, white, and black in the CFS. I kept the settings stock, sliced it, and printed it. The print was actually pretty fun considering how I rarely ever do multicolor or trinket prints, but it was really cool and for 0.2 millimeter layer height, the print looked great. But why stop at an octopus when I can also print flexible cats? So I loaded them into the slicer, changed the CFS colors to black, white, and pink, and then sent it to the printer. The cats printed really nice and they honestly kind of just slid off the build plate whenever I went to pick them up. They're really flexible and really fun to play with. Hello everyone, I've been using the K2 Combo for about a week now, and I can say that it's a really solid printer. It offers a 260 millimeter cubed build space, which is nice for most projects, props, or helmets that I do. 
However, the printer doesn't have an actively heated chamber like the K2 Plus, but I haven't really run into any issues with it so far. What I really like about this printer is how smooth and quiet it runs. It's using three step servo motors, one located in the extruder, and then two in the X and Y direction. And because of this, you don't even really hear it running in the background, whereas the K2 Plus is pretty loud. The K2 also comes with a camera that's already installed in the printer. And while it's common with most printers, it's nice being able to detect any issues that are occurring, capture time lapses for you, and also automatically detect what build plate you're using. If you want to purchase the K2 by itself, it is $549. However, if you want to purchase the combo, which comes with a CFS, it is $699. And honestly, for what you're getting out of this, that's a pretty fair price. I also really like the fact that you can take the CFS off of other Creality printers and attach it to this to use eight rolls of filament at once. The CFS system on these machines is fantastic. While I typically don't do a lot of multicolored prints, I do like the fact that I can use the entire spool and automatically swap to the next whenever I need to complete a print. The multicolor printing on this machine is awesome. As you can tell with the little octopus, it popped off the bed with no issues. I also test printed these cats and you can see the quality is really nice and they printed extremely good. All in all, this is an extremely solid printer and I haven't really had any issues with it. If you don't need a large machine like the K2 Plus, the K2 Combo is honestly a great deal for the price, quality, and speed of it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. All of the links for everything I used and the machines will be in the description below, and I'll see you next time.